Hello and welcome to Cloud Learners Journey Part 7 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Question and Answers with Explanation and References which you can find in the description. So let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our Cloud Learners Journey YouTube channel to help you pass the AC104 exam and become an Azure Administrator Associate. Question number 1. You are planning to deploy an Ubuntu Server Virtual Machine to your company's Azure subscription. You are required to implement a custom deployment that includes adding a particular trusted root certification authority. Which of the following should you use to create the virtual machine? And the options are A. The new Azure RMVM commandlet B. The new AZVM commandlet C. The create AZVM commandlet D. The AZVM create command And the correct option is D. The AZVM create command you should use the AZVM create command with the hyphen custom data parameter so you can pass in your cloud.init config file. Ensure that the full path to the cloud.init file is used if the file is not located in the working directory. Next, question number two. Your company has an Azure subscription that includes a storage account, a resource group, a blob container, and a file share. A colleague named John Ross makes use of a solitary Azure Resource Manager template to deploy a virtual machine and an additional Azure storage account. You want to review the ARM template that was used by John Ross. Here the solution is, you access the container plate. Does the solution meet the goal? And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct answer is B, no. You should use the resource group plate. Go to Azure portal, select the resource group where the virtual machine was created. Under resource group plate, go to settings and select deployments. Under deployments plate, select template. The template used for the deployment is displayed and is available for download. Next, question number three. Your company has an Azure subscription that includes a storage account, a resource group, a blob container, and a file share. A colleague named John Ross makes use of a solitary Azure resource manager template to deploy a virtual machine and an additional Azure storage account. You want to review the ARM template that was used by John Ross. It is similar to the previous question, but the solution is different. Here the solution is you access the virtual machine blade. Does the solution meet the goal? Option A, yes, B, no. And the correct answer is B, no. As we discussed earlier, uh, you should use the resource group blade. Next, question number four. It's the same question, but the solution is different. Here the solution is you access the resource group blade. And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct answer is A, yes. As we discussed in the last two questions, we should use the resource group plate. Next, question number five. You have an Azure subscription named subscription one that contains an Azure virtual machine named VM1. VM1 is in a resource group named RG1. VM1 runs services that will be used to deploy resources to RG1. You need to ensure that a service running on VM1 can manage the resources in RG1. By using the identity of VM1, what should you do first? Here the options are A. From the Azure portal, modify the managed identity settings of VM1. B. From the Azure portal, modify the access control IAM settings of RG1. C. From the Azure portal, modify the access control IAM settings of VM1. D. From the Azure portal, modify the policy settings of RG1. And the correct option is A. From the Azure portal, modify the managed identity settings of VM1. The managed identities for Azure resources provides Azure services with an automatically managed identity in Azure Active Directory. You can enable and disable the system assigned managed identity for VM. Next, question number six. You configure the custom role shown in the following exhibit. Here we see the exhibit. Role name is role one. Role type is true. Assignable scope is two. Subscriptions and the subscription ID. And we do have the further information below. Use the drop-down menus to select the answers choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic. In the answer area for the first one, to ensure that users can sign in to virtual machines that are assigned role 1, modify the role types. Role types set to true or custom roles for custom roles, set to false or built-in role for built-in roles. You need to configure Azure RBAC policy to determine who can log into the VM. Two Azure resources are used to authorize VM login. 
virtual machine administrator login and virtual machine user login. Second answer area, to ensure that role 1 can be assigned only to a resource group named RG1, modify the assignable scopes. You can specify a scope at four levels from broad to narrow, management group, subscription, resource group and resource. Next, question number 7. You have an Azure subscription that contains a storage account. You have an on-premises server named Server1 that runs Windows Server 2016. Server1 has 2 TB of data. You need to transfer the data to the storage account by using the Azure Import Export service. In which order should you perform the actions? Here the actions are from the Azure portal, update the import job. From the Azure portal, create an import job, attach an external disk to server one and then run WA import export.exe. Detach the external disk from server one and ship the disk to an Azure data center. And the correct actions are attach an external disk to server one and then run WA import.exe. This will determine data to be imported, number of drives you need, destination blob location for your data in Azure storage. Use the WA import export tool to copy data to disk drives. Encrypt the disk drives with BitLocker. Second action is from the Azure portal, create an import job. Create an import job in your target storage account in Azure portal. Upload the drive journal files. Third action is detach the external disk from server one and ship the disk to an Azure data center. Provide the return address and carrier account number for shipping the drives back. Fourth action is from the Azure portal, update the import job. Update the delivery tracking number in the import job details and submit the import job. The drives are received and processed at the Azure data center. The drives are shipped back using your courier account to the return address provided in the import job. Next, question number 8. You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure storage account. You plan to copy an on-premises virtual machine image to a container named VM Images. You need to create the container for the planned image. Which command should you run? Options in the answer area are make and then blob. Similar to OS images, VM image is a collection of metadata and pointers to a set of VHDs, which is one VHD per disk, stored as page blobs in Azure storage. Next, question number nine. You have a recovery service vault that you use to test backups. The test backups contains two protected virtual machines. You need to delete the recovery service vault. And the options are A. From the recovery service vault, delete the backup data. B. Modify the disaster recovery properties of each virtual machine. C. Modify the locks of each virtual machine. D. From the recovery service vault, stop the backup of each backup item. And the correct option is D. From the recovery service vault, stop the backup of each backup item. You can't delete a recovery service vault if it is registered to a server and holds backup data because Vault is still configured to receive backup data. So remove Vault dependencies and delete Vault. Next, question number 10. You have an Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS1. You need to configure cluster autoscaler for AKS1. Which two tools should you use? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Here the options are A. kubectl command B. AZ AKS command C. Set AZ VM commandlet D. Azure portal. E. Set AZ AKS commandlet. And the correct options are B. AZ AKS command and D. Azure portal. Reason for each option is A. kubectl command is used for configuring Kubernetes and not AKS cluster. For B. The AZ AKS command is used for the AKS cluster configuration. C. Set AZ VM commandlet is used for VMs. D. Azure portal under node pools. Press scale, then choose auto scale. E. Set AZ AKS creates or updates an AKS cluster. Next, like question 11. You have an app named App1 that runs on an Azure web app named Web App1. The developers at your company upload an update of App1 to a Git repository named Git1. Web App1 has the deployment slots shown in the following table. We have the name Web App1 prod and for the function is production web app one hyphen test and the function is staging you need to ensure that the app one update is tested before the update is made available to users which two actions should you perform and the options are a swap the slots 
B. Deploy the app one update to web app one hyphen prod and then test the update. C. Stop web app one hyphen prod. D. Deploy the app one update to web app one hyphen test and then test the update. E. Stop web app one hyphen test. And the correct options are A. Swap the slots. D. Deploy the app one update to web app one hyphen test and then test the update. You can swap instances assigned to a slot on demand. Deploying your application to a non-production slot can validate app changes in a staging deployment slot before swapping it with the production slot. Next, question number 12. You have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure availability set named webprod-as-use2 as shown in the following exhibit. We have the exhibit with an ID subscription and the location is East US 2 name webprod as used to and you see the further following information below. You add 14 virtual machines to webprod as used to. Use the drop down menus to select the answer choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic. In the answer area for the first one, when Microsoft performs planned maintenance in East US 2, the maximum number of unavailable virtual machines will be 2. Because there are 10 update domains, the 14 VMs are shared across the 10 update domains. So 4 update domains will have 2 VMs and 6 update domains will have 1 VM. Only one update domain is reported at a time. Therefore, a maximum of 2 VMs will be offline. And the second one, if the server rack in the Azure data center that hosts webprod as used to experience a power failure, the maximum number of unavailable virtual machines will be 7. There are two fault domains. The 14 VMs are shared across the two fault domains. So seven VMs in each fault domain. A rack failure will affect one fault domain. So seven VMs will be offline. Next, question number 13. You have an Azure subscription that contains the resources shown in the following table. We have the columns, name, type, and the region. And we have the resource names, RG1, RG2, storage1, storage2, VM1, VNet1, VNet2, respectively. VM1 connects to VNet1, you need to connect VM1 to VNet2. Here the solution is, you turn off VM1 and then you add a new network interface to VM1. Does this meet the goal? And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct answer is B, no. Though VM1 is turned off, still it connects to VNet1. And any resource cannot have two VNets. So first you should delete VM1 and then recreate VM1. After that, add the network interface for VM1. Next, question number 14. You have an Azure subscription that contains the resources shown in the following table. This one is same as previous question, but the solution is different. You move VM1 to RG2 and then you add a new network interface to VM1. Does this meet the goal? And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct option is B, no. Moving VM1 doesn't resolve the issue. As discussed in previous question, first you should delete VM1 and then recreate VM1. After that, add the network interface for VM1. Next, question number 15. You have an Azure subscription that contains the resources shown in the following table. This is also the same as the previous question, but here the solution is different. You could delete VM1, you recreate VM1, and then you create a new network interface for VM1 and connect it to VNet2. Does this meet the goal? And the options are A, yes, B, no. And the correct option is A, yes. As we discussed, when you create an Azure virtual machine, you must create a virtual network or use an existing VNet. You can change the subnet a VM is connected to after it's created, but you cannot change the VNet. So here we end with part seven. Thank you for watching part seven of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers. We hope you found it informative and helpful. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel and comment for more related topics. We look forward to continuing the journey with you in next videos. Thank you.